In this lecture video, we are going to talk about user testing. User testing or customer testing is a stage in the testing process in which customers or users will provide input and advice on how the system has to be tested. Now, this may involve either formally testing a system that has been commissioned from an external supplier, or it could also mean an informal process where users experiment with a new software product to see if they like it and if it does what they need it to do. User testing is essential. The main reason for this is that influences from the user's working environment have a major effect on the reliability, performance, usability, and robustness of a system. In practice, there are three different types of user testing. These are listed for you on the slide. Alpha testing is where the users of the software work with the development team to test the software at the developer's site. Beta testing, where a release of the software is made available to users to allow them to experiment and to raise problems that they discover with the system developers. Thirdly, acceptance testing where customers test a system to decide whether or not it is ready to be accepted from the system developers and deployed in the customer's environment. Let's talk about each of these testings in detail. In alpha testing, users and developers work together to test a system as it is being developed. This means that the users can identify problems and issues that are not readily apparent to the developing or the development testing team. Developers can only really work from the requirements, but these do not reflect other factors that affect the practical use of the system. This is because users are the ones who are ultimately going to use the system and not the development team. Users can therefore provide information about practice that helps with the design of more realistic or practical tests. Alpha testing is often used when the developing software products that are sold as shrink wrapped systems. So users of shrink wrapped systems may be willing to get involved in the alpha testing process because this gives them early information about new system features that they can work with. It also reduces the risk that unanticipated changes to the software will have disruptive effects on their business. This is because the users are involved with the system right from the testing. Corrections can be made then and there and the users will not be uh, taken aback by the system's performance or the features that the system will deliver. If the system delivers something that the user does not like, the feedback is obtained then and there and can be incorporated into the system. However, alpha testing may also be used when a customized software is being developed. Let's go to the next type of testing, the beta testing. Beta testing takes place when an early, sometimes say unfinished release of a software system is made available to customers and users for evaluation before it is fully marketed. Beta testers may be a selected group of customers who are early adopters of the system. Alternatively, the software may be publicly available for use by anyone who is interested in it. Beta testing is more, mostly used for software products that are used in many different environments as opposed to customized systems which are generally developed for a very specific environment or a specific customer. It is impossible for product developers to know and replicate all the environments in which the software will be used. 
Beta testing therefore becomes essential to discover interaction problems between the software and the environment in which the software is being used. Beta testing also becomes a form of marketing. Customers learn about their system and what it can do for them. So you may see many application softwares being released to a small group of users before it's being before it being released to the general or a more broad section of public. The third type of testing is acceptance testing. Acceptance testing is an inherent part of custom systems development. It takes place after release testing. Acceptance testing involves a customer formally testing a system to decide whether or not it should be accepted from the developer. Acceptance implies that the payment should be made for the system. Now, there are six stages in acceptance testing process and they are illustrated in this figure. First step here is define acceptance criteria, which is listed in the OVAL. So all the OVAL items are the different steps in the process and the rectangular boxes are outputs from a particular process or inputs to a particular process. So let's take a look at the first process step that is define acceptance criteria. This stage should ideally take place early in the process before the contract for the system is signed. The acceptance criteria should be part of the system contract and be agreed between the customer and the developer. In practice, however, it can be difficult to define criteria so early in the process. Detailed requirements may not be available at that stage, and there may be significant requirements that will change during the development process because it has to be defined really early during the system um, you know, de development stage. The next stage is plan acceptance testing. This involves deciding on the resources, time, and budget for acceptance testing and establishing a testing schedule. The acceptance test plan uh, should also discuss the required coverage of the requirements, the order in which the system features are going to be tested, and so on. It should also define risks to the testing process such as system crashes, inadequate performance, and discuss how these risks can be reduced or mitigated. The next phase is derive system or acceptance tests. Once acceptance criteria have been established, tests have to be designed to check whether or not a system is acceptable. Acceptance tests should aim to test both the functional and non-functional characteristics of the system. They should ideally provide complete coverage of the system requirements. In practice, it is difficult to establish completely objective acceptance criteria. There is often scope for argument about whether or not a test shows that a criteria has been definitely miss, uh, met. The next step or the next stage is run acceptance tests. The agreed acceptance tests are executed on the system. Ideally, this should take place in the actual environment where the system will be used, but this may be disruptive and impractical. Therefore, a user testing environment may have to be set up to run these tests. It is difficult to automate this process as part of the acceptance tests may involve testing the interactions between end users and the systems and humans may be involved. Some training of end users might be required because this should replicate the end user's environment. The next phase is negotiate test results. It's very unlikely that all of the defined acceptance tests will pass and there will be no problems at all with the systems. If this is the case, then acceptance testing is complete and the system can be handed over. More commonly, definitely there'll be some problems that will be discovered. In such cases, the developer and the customer will have to negotiate to decide if the system is good enough for deployment or some modifications have to be made to resolve the identified problems. The last stage is reject or accept the system. 
This stage involves a meeting between the developers and the customers to decide on whether or not the system should be accepted. If the system is not good enough for use, then further development is required to fix the identified problems. Once complete, the acceptance testing phase is repeated. Now, one problem with user involvement is ensuring that the user who is embedded in the development team is a typical user with general knowledge of how the system will be used. It can be difficult to find such a user, and so the acceptance tests may actually not be a true reflection of practice. The customer may accept the system, so the deployment can begin irrespective of the system uh, fails or passes completely uh, the acceptance testing. The system provider may then agree to repair urgent problems and deliver a new version to the customer as quickly as possible. So this is about user testing and the three variations of user testing.